So, did you get a chance to check out Saturday Night Live over the weekend? They did this new kind of remote from home situation. Uh, it had a really beautiful tribute moment in it, which we'll share with you coming up. It's Monday, it's April 13th, and this is The Current Music News. Hey, I'm Jade. And I'm Jay. Well, this would be the week that Coachella would be happening, if not for the global pandemic. So yeah, you may have noticed fewer flower crowns in your Instagram feed, and that actually has major implications for a certain subset of the fashion industry that's really come to rely on festival season as a chance to get their new looks out there. Um, trend forecaster Lucy Green tells the New York Times that, quote, for some brands, festivals aren't just a season, like summer or fall, but they are the season to build relationships with a certain kind of shopper who buy fun new extra additions for their wardrobe they wouldn't normally be tempted by. So it may seem like in the scheme of things, maybe not the hugest deal if we sell a few fewer neon fanny packs, not as many bejeweled belts, not as many sunglasses chains, but you know, this is a this is a major segment of the fashion industry, and there are a lot of retailers that really have come to rely on this. Uh, prominent online retailer Revolve says that they generally make around 30% of their annual sales in the weeks surrounding Coachella. A similar company, ASOS, says that it is trying to make the best of a tough situation, and this year has pivoted to indoor loungewear. So speaking of festival cancellations, uh, the news just broke that Burning Man is off this year. It wasn't scheduled to start until August 30th, but it takes a while to build that Black Rock City out there in the Nevada desert for the annual arts festival. Interestingly, organizers say that they are going to try to make Black Rock City happen online this year. They admit that they're not sure how it's going to come out. I don't know, Jade, how would you celebrate Burning Man in your backyard? I mean, you just have to build right? Something burnable. So whatever artistic structure, put on your giant goggles, blow, get some like wind blowers so you can get some sand in your face, get the real experience. I feel like you could do it in your backyard. Maybe a little body paint. <laughs> Always some neon glittery body paint. Really get the neighbors looking out their windows. <laughs> well, uh, it is, you know, a global pandemic right now. And we've been hearing from more and more musicians who are uh, COVID positive. And one of those artists that just released a statement saying that he did, in fact, have the coronavirus was Sturgill Simpson. Uh, Sturgill Simpson, he is a actor, a singer and songwriter. Uh, at the 2017 Grammys, he took away the uh, country album of the year and and he was up for the album of the year. Well, he released this statement and it's pretty frustrated, <laughs> quite frankly, on Instagram, talking about how he couldn't get a test for the coronavirus. When he went into the hospital, he said he was having chest pains, he had a fever, he had uh, pre-stroke blood pressure levels, and yet they would not give him the test. And he said he was finally able to go back and get in and get the test, and turns out, yes, indeed, he is positive for COVID-19. And as he wrote on Instagram, I'm still positive and contagious, and now on quarantine in the dojo, until April 19th. Another very young, fairly young, I should say, artist who uh, has said that most likely she had COVID-19 is Caroline Polachek. Uh, Caroline Polachek, she's an artist who's written music for Beyonce and Travis Scott. Uh, she's also a solo artist, and you probably know her best for her song Bruises, which came out back in 2008. Uh, it got really famous on an iPod commercial. But what she said is kind of the same thing. She contracted COVID, or what she thinks was COVID-19, um, had all the symptoms back before we were talking about the symptoms of loss of smell, loss of taste, uh, being, uh, you know, weird stomach issues. And she said at the time, nobody really knew that that's uh, the symptoms for COVID-19. And so she said, I still haven't gotten tested, so I don't know for sure if that's what it was, but all things considered, yeah, most likely she had uh, COVID-19 as well. Well, a lot has changed in the music world this spring, but one thing that has not changed is music memorabilia selling for massive sums. 
On Friday, there was an online auction of Beatles memorabilia, and one of the highest profile items were the handwritten lyrics to Hey Jude that Paul McCartney used to record the song with the Beatles at London's Trident Studios in 1968. Those lyrics were expected to fetch about $160,000, which is already a pretty good sum. In fact, bidding soared to nearly a million dollars. The lyrics went for over $900,000. Not everything at the auction was quite that pricey. You know, if you don't have a million dollars to drop on Beatles memorabilia, uh, for example, Ringo Starr's ashtray from Abbey Road Studios, only $32,500. <laughs> That's today's music news. We'll be back with another installment, so like and follow us to be sure to catch it. You can listen to The Current on the radio, on our web stream, on our app, or on your smart speaker. And click in the comments to let us know what music news stories are meaningful to you right now. And as I said, did you watch Saturday Night Live? Did you check it out? The kind of strange remote from home, it was hosted by Tom Hanks, who's uh, been a host for Saturday Night Live several times, also notably a survivor of the coronavirus. And uh, there was a moment where uh, they had a musical guest, as they typically do, but again, a little bit different since it was this at-home version. Uh, but it was Chris Martin of Coldplay, and he did a cover of Bob, Bob Dylan's Shelter from the storm, a really beautiful moment. But I think the moment that kind of transcended the whole show was this tribute to their longtime music producer, that would be Hal Wilner. Uh, so they got together, kind of the, the best of the best of Saturday Night Live. So it was Amy Poehler, Maya Rudolph, uh, Molly Shannon, and Tina Fey all together singing a song for Hal Wilner. Uh, they covered, in fact, Wilner's good friend Lou Reed and did their version of Perfect Day. My name is uh, Hal Wilner. We are going to miss you so damn much. You are just a great man, great person. We're all going to miss his presence and passing him in the hallways. and A wonderful friend to me, to so many people that worked at Saturday Night Live. He was one of the coolest and most passionate and good-natured. Just always laughing and always smiling and just loved to talk about music. When I was at SNL, he used to come up to my dressing room and just share music with me. Oh, such a perfect day you just keep me happy